So I want to start this morning with a story. And it's actually a story that I heard from Father Jim Pfeiffer, who you all know, priest of our diocese, who knows Fostoria very well because he's from here. So let me give it a shot. Mabel was a wonderful churchgoer. She was there every Sunday and really became fond of her pastor's preaching. So now i got to stop here and say, obviously, I'm not talking about our church. I'm talking about another church in another place. Maybe not even a Catholic church, as far as we know. But we know the story is not about us here, okay? So Mabel likes the fact that the pastor preaches about substantive things which she believes will help make the culture a better place. And one Sunday, the preacher decided that he was going to preach on pride, the sin of pride. And he spoke about how important it is that we be humble of heart like Jesus and not be proud. And Mabel sat up in the front pew, turned to her friends and smiled, and then looked at her pastor and said, Preach on, preacher, preach on. So the next Sunday, uh, the pastor took up the sin of gluttony and spoke about how those who overeat are not caring for feeding the hungry poor of the world. And Mabel was pleased again. She turned to her friends and smiled, and there she was in the front row, and she looked at the preacher and said, Preach on, preacher, preach on. The next Sunday, the pastor decided that he would take up the sin of gossip. And he said gossip was harmful and tearing the community apart. And anybody that participates in gossip would be damned to hell. Well, Mabel turned and looked at her friends in the front pew and then looked back at the preacher puzzled and then looked back at her friends and, and asked her friends, when did the pastor stop preaching and start meddling? <laughs> That's about the way Father Pfeiffer told it. <laughs> well, in the first, uh, let me just say, in the past few days, we may, may have had, uh, heard some rumors or some gossip in our small town about our school again and where we are in terms of the strength of this particular ministry. I want to say our school is a wonderful opportunity for evangelizing all our families who attend. I really believe, as we reflect on this World Mission Sunday, that this small mission, the mission of Catholic education in Fostoria, Ohio, is truly amazing. In this ministry, we not only serve the students who attend, but all the families and extended family members who are part of this important ministry. And in fact, Sister Liz, just a couple days ago, reminded me that the school ministry is a blessing because in it we have an opportunity also to serve the poor. Now the truth of the matter is if the families at St. Wendling School are like my family when I was growing up, well we were poor. We never thought we were poor, <laughs> but looking back, at least in terms of money, we were poor. But we were rich in so many other ways. In fact, as I look at all of our ministries in our parish, I believe we are doing our best to make disciples of all we encounter. The majority of us wish to enhance our own discipleship in living out the simple gospel mandate to love our neighbor as ourselves. I pray that you, my parishioners, will live your faith with the whole of who you are, in our parish, but just as importantly, in your own day-to-day -day lives. I want the parish to be a place that helps you to be all you are called to be as Christian disciples. Sure, I wouldn't be disappointed that in the midst of all of that transformation that the parish's bills got paid, <laughs> but more importantly, we will be able to serve those in need in our community and in our whole world through living stewardship. People simply giving from our hearts. And you have given much from your heart. 
whether it's World Mission Sunday that we celebrate this weekend, where our prayers and our donations go to the farthest reaches of the earth with missionary priests and religious who carry the gospel to those who still have not heard the name of Jesus Christ, or whether it's supporting the evangelical mystery ministries in our own parish so that we can carry the word of the gospel to those who still have not heard of Jesus Christ. And there are so many, many people here in Faustoria who still need to be touched by the good news of the gospel. It's not their fault. It's just the way things are. On this World Mission Sunday, if we review the mission of our parish, we can see that there are challenges in all of our ministries. In fact, we could describe the early 21st century of Christianity as not being a Catholic moment. There are many challenges that have come to the worldwide church, to the local church, and even to local parishes. This last Monday, I attended a celebration in Columbus at the Pontifical Seminary Josephinum. And two things that I heard caught my attention. The first came from a young seminarian who, I can't remember his name, but he recognized that we are no longer in this uh, church of Christendom, but actually we're entering into a new apostolic age that's dependent upon evangelization. And evangelization not to the farthest ends of the earth, but evangelization right at the kitchen table. The second thing I heard was from Bishop Daniel Conlon, Bishop of Gilead, Illinois, but a former seminary professor of mine in Cincinnati. Bishop Daniel was a priest of the Archdiocese of Cincinnati and became Bishop of Steubenville and then was named Bishop in Joliet. I had a great visit with Bishop Conlon. He actually remembered me. <laughs> and frankly, I think he was kind of surprised that I've made it close to 25 years of priesthood. <laughs> he talked in his remarks about Two of our new saints, he mentioned Arch, Archbishop Oscar Romero, who was martyred while celebrating Mass, and St. Pope Paul VI. Bishop Conlon especially focused on Paul VI, who was, pope, was the pope that was finishing carrying out Vatican II reforms. Bishop Conlon talked about how important Pope Paul VI felt it was that we never lose a sense of the signs of the time. We need to get the signs of the times right. And Bishop Conlon said, for certain, these are different times. While we're doing a great job in trying to complete our mission, what we can say is that there's still work yet to do. And one of our most beloved ministries, our Catholic school ministry, is still facing many challenges. And I think that this is what the recent gossip has been that you may have heard or maybe still yet to hear. And I'm truly sorry about the gossip. I wish I could stop it. But that'd be like trying to stop one of the trains from blowing their whistle in the middle of the night. On and on and on. I don't think it can be done. <laughs> but the good part about gossip is that it reminds us that we're a tight-knit community. People wouldn't be talking if they didn't care. And I think it's really important for us to remember that. People care about what happens in terms of our mission here at St. Wendelin. And we are in a difficult time where we have to try to figure out how we can fulfill our mission of making disciples of all we can encounter, while at the same time using our parish resources to achieve that end. The school is a great example of that kind of ministry. You know, about a month or two ago, one of the children here uh, in our parish asked me after Mass 
Father Todd, what do you say when you hold up the collection basket? And I told her, well, I pray a prayer. And she said, really, what prayer? And I said, well, yes, a prayer. I say, thank you, Lord, for all your gifts. Help us be good stewards of all you give us. Isn't that what we all really want to do? Be good stewards of all the gifts that God has given us, whether in our own lives or here at our parish as we seek to achieve our mission. You know, James and John were criticized in the gospel for wanting to sit one at the right and one at the left of Jesus. One perspective might see that what they were truly were desiring to do was to be good stewards of the kingdom that Jesus was leaving them. They didn't want the power of prestige, but rather they wanted to make sure that they were close to Jesus so that they would be sure to be good stewards of the kingdom that they would inherit. They certainly would drink the cup that Jesus drank. And they certainly have found themselves in the company of our Lord today. So on this World Mission Sunday, it's given me and others a great opportunity to look at our parish mission and the ways that we try to fulfill it. Some ministries certainly continue to be relevant as we look to the signs of the times. Some ministries are not relevant as we look at those same signs. They've just gone by the wayside. And some ministries we still have to discern. How can we be wide stewards of them, like our Catholic school ministry? Probably now more than ever, we need to look at the signs of our times and prayerfully discern how we can best worship, evangelize, and educate. These are the focused ways that we believe we can achieve our parish mission to make disciples of all the nations, including those folks in our neighborhoods and in our families. Our worship is excellent. And this week, coming up, we'll celebrate how blessed we are as a Eucharistic community. We celebrate not only our parish feast day tomorrow, the feast of St. Wendland, but we celebrate and meditate and give thanks for the fact that we are a Eucharistic community. Eucharist that brings us unity. Someone once asked, why go to Mass? The answer is because it changes the world. It's the Eucharist that allows us to be energized to carry forward the proclamation of the kingdom of God. And so these next 40 hours of devotion are a unique opportunity for us to focus, for us to give thanks to God that he has made us his body and blood that he has made us his people who reach to the ends of the earth and to our neighborhoods to proclaim his love, his life, his life for the life of the world. Faustoria can be different in many ways just by the choices we make here in our faith community. Certainly, we know the impact of our Catholic school ministry on our community. In fact, some might say that the school is more well-known than our parish is. Thanks to all the energy of our teachers and our families and our students who always keep us out there in the news and on the minds and hearts of those who are in our city. There's pride in having a Catholic school. And believe you me, people see our ministry of education, our Catholic school, far better than they see the works of our parish. What do you expect when our school is situated right in the heart of everything that matters in Faustoria? I would love to believe that St. Wendelin Parish is in the heart of everything that matters in Faustoria. But if you really look, it's not the parish. It's not our school. It's the McDonald's. Is that place ever not busy? Obviously, we're not the McDonald's, but boy, we should love to have that kind of business and that kind of loyalty. Cars wrapped around that building all the time. Well, who are we then? 
We are strong and good people who want to bring the good news of Jesus to our neighborhoods and to the ends of the earth. As we look at the signs of the time, the way that we do that will change. I want, I think we want, all our efforts and ministries to be effective, efficient, and evangelical. Some ministries will be old and need to be renewed. Some ministries will be new and need to be improved. So back to our school ministry. We love our school very much, but there is cause for concern. It's filled with challenges. And as your pastor, I want to explain these concerns and challenges so that you can better understand them. So on Monday, November 12th, we're going to gather as a parish family to learn about these concerns and challenges. So if you want to learn more, please plan to attend and uh, come and learn as much as we can about our challenges. Remember, everything we do is focused on doing God's will doing what Jesus wants us to do, being guided by his Holy Spirit. In our ongoing work for the Lord, buildings will be built and torn down. Ministries will come and go, for sure. But the mission that we carry out, the mission to our zip code, 44830, is what our Lord has asked us to work with. And again, it starts in our homes, families. It starts in our extended families. It starts in neighborhoods and with friends who we want to make friends and be friends with and hopefully want to introduce them to Jesus Christ. Gospel values should cause us to think how we are living our lives. We are never there having arrived at Christian perfection with nothing more to do. But instead, the message Jesus calls us to dig deeper, question more, and change our lives to be more like his, the master's life, and to be able to do his work of ministry. So please take the words of St. Paul's letter to the Hebrews to heart. They're good for us to hear in these times. Since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. And the next line is so important. Let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. To find grace for timely help. We rely on the Lord to guide us so that we know the signs of our times and how he wants us to minister to them. 